shell method, and if the disk method would work for everything, then we wouldn't learn a shell method. But the disk method doesn't work for everything. Um, sometimes even things it does work for, it's the more difficult of the two methods. So first we're going to do a problem by the disk method, like we would have um, actually this problem was in the 7.2 notes on the disk method. We're going to do it this way and then see if maybe this uh, problem would have been easier using the shell method. When we use the disc or washer method to find the volume of a solid, we use rectangles which are perpendicular to the axis of revolution. When we were rotating a function around the x-axis, we use vertical rectangles. When we were rotating um, a function around the y-axis, we used horizontal rectangles. This can be problematic when we have a function of x that's difficult to solve for y, or a function of y that's difficult to solve for x, it can also be a problem when there's a boundary change, when um, the upper and lower boundaries or the right and left boundaries aren't the same for the entire region that we're looking at. So here's a problem that was in the 7.2 um, section of the book. Use the disk method to find the volume of the solid formed by revolving the region bounded by the graphs of y equals x squared plus 1 y equals 0, x equals 0, and x equals 1 about the y-axis. So there's our axis of revolution right there. y equals x squared plus 1 is the concave up parabola with vertex at 0, 1. <coughs> and so we're spinning not just that parabola, but all the area under that parabola um, from the x-axis and the y-axis and the line x equals 1. So this is what we're spinning around and around the um, y-axis. And when we do, we get this solid of revolution. It's like a cylinder that somebody has bored out a um, um, bowl shape in the center of it. And the disk method says if we're um, spinning this around the y-axis, then we use horizontal rectangles. And so we use horizontal rectangles. We need this in terms of y instead of x. We need x equals the square root of y minus 1. The thing is, the upper and lower, the right and left boundaries that I would use here if I was using horizontal rectangles, they change. Rectangles below y equals 1 would look like this with the right boundary 1 and the left boundary 0. But rectangles above that line, y equals 1, would look like this, with right boundary 1 and left boundary being that parabola. So if I'm going to use the disk method on this problem, I'm going to have to set up two integrals because of the boundary change. What integral would give me the area of the, actually it would be a cylinder once it's spinning around and around the um, y-axis. What definite integral would give me the volume of that solid formed by spinning just this rectangle around and around the y-axis? This is last night's on this one. Pi, <coughs> definite integral from zero. zero to one, we're using x values. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're using y values, this zero to this one. Okay, so from zero to one, what? Mm -hmm. The outer boundary is one, the inner boundary is zero, I could say 1 squared minus 0 squared, or I could just say 
one squared dy. That'll give me the volume of just this rectangle. <clears throat> Actually, it's a square spun around and around the y-axis. And then what about this piece that's above the line y equals 1? What definite integral would give me that? Um, okay, I'm integrating again y values from 1 to 2 of what? Start with your right, right boundary. Your right boundary is 1. So 1 squared is a, the outer radius squared. And then the inner radius squared is what? It would take both of those integrals to find that volume using the disk method because using horizontal rectangles, the boundaries would change. And we have to set up a different integral um, for each of those two areas where the boundary changed. And I'll just go ahead and tell you I've done that on the calculator and got 3 halves pi. So that's the volume of this Thing, the solid being formed by rotating um, that parabola, the region bounded by that parabola and the x-axis around and around the y-axis. If we could have used vertical rectangles, I don't want to put it in there, I don't want to mess up your notes, but if we could have used vertical rectangles, we could have just used one integral because the upper and lower boundaries would have stayed the same over that entire region. If only we could have used vertical rectangles. Well, you can't use vertical rectangles for the disk method. You don't get disk when you rotate um, a region around, let's see, when you rotate a region using, and then find the volume using rectangles that are parallel to the axis of revolution. When you use rectangles perpendicular to the axis of revolution, you get either this or washers, depending on whether you have a true solid or a solid with a compression or a hole through it. When you use rectangles parallel to the axis of revolution, you get shells. And I've got one quick animation, because you know I can't draw this. I've got one 20 second animation that shows you these shells being formed. And I don't know why this person used a kaleidoscope background. <laughs> That's what it looks like. <laughs> it's the best animation I can find, it's just so darn fast. So let me start it again and point out a couple things. Change the speed. Really? Here? Here? Yeah. No way! Yeah. I've never done that before. So slowing it down would be this, right? No, that would be speeding. That would be speeding up? That's twice the speed. Okay, it takes twice as long. This takes a quarter as long. I've never done that before. Okay, that'll allow me to point better. We have a function. I don't know what that function is, but we're gonna take rectangles that are parallel to the axis of revolution. The axis of revolution here is the y axis. We're gonna take these little rectangles and spin them around the y axis, and when we do, it's gonna make this series of nested shells. When we find the volume of each shell and then add those volumes together, that's going to be a darn good approximation of the volume of that solid. 
So this is just showing three shells. Other videos I saw show more shells. Of course, we're going to use infinitely many shells. And then what I really can't visualize without just a darn good animation is how that makes a solid. Let me go over here and stop it. Where it stops. Whoop. There. Um, if you just, you know, it would, Dr. Pomper, my dean, said that he used Play-Doh, and, and that's P-L-A-Y-D-O, not P-L-A-T-O. Um, he used Play-Doh to teach the shell method, and I'm going to see him later this week, and I'm taking Play-Doh with me, but I'm not, I couldn't figure out what he was doing. Um, I can see that if we had clay, play-doh or something, and we had, here's that first shell and the middle shell and the inner shell, we could mold that play-doh right over the tops of those shells and it would form that solid of revolution. So that's what we're doing. When we use <coughs> rectangles perpendicular to the axis of revolution, ooh, this is good. Axis of revolution, perpendicular to the axis of revolution. Maybe okay, like I could do this with <laughs> in my arm. That makes discs parallel to the axis of revolution. That makes shells. Now, which one we're going to use depends on several things. Uh, which form you give me the equation in, and if it's easy to solve for the other variable, and then whether there are boundary changes. We saw that doing this problem, doing this problem by the disk method took two integrals, and we think that doing it with shells rather than disk, it would only take one interval, but we, integral, but we kind of got to work our way up to that. Um, consider a vertical rectangle bounded by the function y equals x. Here's some y equals x. Imagine the cylindrical shell that would be formed by rotating this rectangle. Here's my rectangle centered about some x value. And if we rotated that rectangle around and around the y axis, it would form a shell that looks like this. Now, how do I get the volume of that shell? Well, the volume of a shell would be the shell circumference times the shell height times the shell thickness. Guess what the shell thickness is? Yeah, it's dx. And we're going to use infinitely many rectangles, so that dx is going to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, what, what would give you the circumference of that shell? Mm -hmm. Two pi times the radius. What's the radius of that shell? It's from the center of the shell to a point on the perimeter of the shell would be x. And so the shell circumference would be 2 pi x. And what is the height of that shell given by? Yeah. Different shells would have different heights close to the y-axis. Your shells would be shorter than, than out here. Your shells would be taller. But in every case, the height of the shell is given to you by f of x. So the volume of that one shell is 2 pi x, f of x, dx. It also, it helped me, um, some of the stuff that I looked at online, imagined a cut line, just cut that somewhere and flatten it out. You flatten out one of those shells, it's a rectangle, and the length of that rectangle is 2 pi x. So when you roll it back up, you have that shell of circumference, 2 pi x. All right, 
That's the volume of one of the shells. What definite integral would give the sum of the volumes of infinitely many of those shells? If we had the boundaries A and B, and we were using some rectangle centered about some point X. What would add up infinitely many of those shells? This is the volume of one shell. What would give the volume of infinitely many shells? That's what integrals do. Integrals add up stuff. So if we just integrated this from A to B, then we would have the sum of the volumes of all of those shells. And that's if we use infinitely many shells, then that's a darn good representation of the volume of the solid. So infinitely many of those shells would be 2 pi times the integral from A to B of the circumference of each shell. We said the circumference of each shell is just 2 pi x. I brought the 2 pi out front because it's a constant, so just x times the height of the shell, which is given to us by f of x, times the thickness of the shell, which is given to us by v of x. And that's the formula for finding the volume of a solid of revolution um, using rectangles that are parallel to the axis of revolution. And then what if we flip that on its side? Nope, we're not ready to flip that on its side. Let's um, set up the definite integral using the shell method instead of the disk method. Let's go back to that first example and see if we could have done it with only one integral if we had used um, shells perpendicular to, the, not perpendicular, parallel to the axis of revolution. So our axis of revolution, still the y-axis, and we're going to use shells parallel to that, which would be vertical shells. We're going to use rectangles. I keep saying shells, but we're going to use rectangles parallel to the y-axis, which would be vertical rectangles. Vertical rectangles have the thickness what? Or the width what? From here to here. Vertical rectangles have the width dx. And if we spun that vertical rectangle around and around and around the y-axis, then we could integrate from 0 to 1, from here to here, from 0 to 1, The circumference of the shell that would be formed is 2 pi times that rectangle is centered around some x. So just the circumference of the rectangle is 2 pi x. We can bring the 2 pi out front and just have the x times the function itself, x squared plus 1 would be the height of each one of those rectangles. Actually, it would be x squared plus 1 minus 0, because the lower boundary is 0. And then dx. So punch this part on your calculator. The integral from 0 to 1, x times x squared plus 1, dx, and tell me what you get. <coughs> 
Hmm? Not yet, because we haven't multiplied by this pi. You get three fourths. And two pi times that three fourths is the same three halves pi that we get by using the disk method. In my opinion, the shell method wasn't a lot easier than the disk method. With the disk method, you did have to realize that, hey, if I'm using horizontal rectangles, the boundaries aren't the same from zero to one as they are from one to two. So you have to realize this is gonna take two integrals. The two integrals weren't difficult to set up or to evaluate as long as you realize, hey, I'm gonna have to use two integrals. The shell method allowed us to use only one integral, but it didn't make the problem significantly easier. I'd say it's almost a coin toss um, which one of those two methods you want to use. All right, do you need to ask me anything before we split this puppy over? So far, you're kind of in there with me. You realize that the two pi x is the circumference of the shell the f of x is the height of the shell, and the dx is the thickness of the shell. All right. A vertical rectangle revolved around the y axis. If you take a shell, a rectangle that's parallel to the axis of revolution, it forms a shell rather than a disc or a washer. It creates a shell of radius x. Actually, oh, those are two separate pictures. Um, x is right here. So x is the distance from the center of the rectangle to the axis of revolution. That radius right there is your x. Your height is given by y equals f of x. And your thickness is dx. So the solid of revolution created by infinitely many of those nested shells is 2 pi times the integral from a to b of x f of x dx. And if we had a rectangle that was being, a horizontal rectangle that was being rotated around the x-axis, horizontal rectangles parallel to the x-axis, what is the width of a horizontal rectangle? Yeah, that's going to be the difference in two y values will give you that thickness. Um, the solid created by rotating that around the x-axis creates a shell with radius y. y is going to be the center of that rectangle. Height is given to me as f of y, or in this picture it's g of y, it doesn't matter, but it does have to be in terms of y, and thickness dy. The volume created by infinitely many nested shells is 2 pi times the integral from c to d of y f of y dy. Shall we try some? Let's try some that are already graphed for us first. Number two, we're already given the graph of the line y equals one minus x. 
um, we want to rotate that the direction, say, around the Y axis, and it's telling us to use the shell method. It's not saying use any method you want, it's saying use the shell method. So if we're gonna rotate that triangular region around the Y axis, and we're gonna use um, rectangles that are parallel to the Y axis, then we're gonna have vertical rectangles. And vertical rectangles have a width of what? dx. So I want my function in terms of x, and that volume would be 2 pi times the integral, since we're using vertical rectangles and everything's in terms of x, we're going to use x values for our bounds of integration, so we're integrating from where to where? From 0 to 1, and X is the distance from um, the center of the rectangle to the axis of revolution. So that rectangle is centered at some X value. 2 pi X is the circumference of the shell. And the height of the shell is going to be given by what? The function itself. That's the circumference of the shell times the height of the shell times the width of the shell. Will that x always be there in the circumference? No. It'll, it'll, something will always be there. It won't always be plain old x. It will be plain old x tonight until we hit this gnarly problem right here. But that's going to be tomorrow. When you have... <laughs> when you have um, the graph being rotated around some other line or not centered at the origin. Then we're gonna have to deal with that. Tonight, that, that distance from the um, center of the rectangle to the axis of revolution is just gonna be X for vertical rectangles or just Y for horizontal rectangles. All right, that, like last night, this is, the, the hard part is just setting these up after that, I don't care if you punch the definite integral on the calculator um, and just keep up with the pi, but that turns out to be pi over three. All right, number four. Again, we're given the graph, this piece of a parabola. Um, We're rotating around the y-axis, and since it says use the shell method, we've got to use rectangles parallel to the y-axis. So once again, we're using vertical rectangles. Vertical rectangles that are centered at some x value. So the volume of the solid that would be formed by spinning that little area around the y-axis would be the circumference of each shell would just be 2 pi x and I can factor the, or not factor, but bring the 2 pi out from in front of the integral. Um, over what interval am I integrating? x values 0 to 2 where 2 pi x is the circumference of the shell and what gives me the height of the shell and really train your eyes to go what's the top of the rectangle touching what's the bottom of the rectangle touching the top boundary of the rectangle is what three and so what's the height of that rectangle From here to here, from 3 to 1 half x squared plus 1. Yeah. 3 minus 1 half x squared plus 1. 
And I would probably clean that up before I even picked up my calculator. I'd call that 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 2. This would be 3 minus 1 is 2 times x is 2x. And then negative 1 half x squared times x is negative 1 half x cubed. And then I'd whip out the calculator. The value of the integral is 2. And when you multiply that 2 times 2 pi, you get this volume as 4 pi. I have found that with the shell method, it's very, very helpful for me to draw the rectangle and say what's the top of the rectangle touching, what's the bottom of the rectangle touching, what are the boundaries of that rectangle. And then when I have a horizontal rectangle, I'll go what's the right edge of the rectangle touching, what's the left edge of the rectangle touching. All right, let's try some that we don't have the graph already given. Um, number 10. Anytime you're not sure what the graph looks like, you can always punch it on the calculator. You can graph it. We want the graph bounded by x to the 3 halves, the horizontal line y equals 8, and the y-axis. I know that's going to go through 0, 0, and through um, if x equals 4, if x equals 4, y would be 8. So that's my point of intersection, 4, 8. And if I only graph it from x equals 0 to x equals 4, it kind of looks like a parabola. It's not. But that's the basic shape. Just from the y-axis to x equals 4. So the region I'm looking for is bounded by that. And the line y equals 8. and the y-axis. So do you see what region is being spun around? Um, 1 through 14 are all around the y-axis. So around the y-axis. That's what we're spinning around the y-axis. And we could use disk, except for the direction, say we're practicing shell right now. So if I'm going around the y-axis with the shell method, do I need horizontal rectangles or vertical rectangles? Parallel to the axis of revolution would be vertical rectangles. Very helpful to me to draw my rectangles, or draw a rectangle. And say, if I spun that rectangle around and around the y-axis, it would create a shell. One of infinitely many shells, but a shell. And so the volume would be 2 pi times the integral from, see that shell is moving, let me make sure you understand this, that shell is moving from here 
to here as it creates the shells. Um, that rectangle, I am wrongly interchanging the word shell and rectangle, but that rectangle is moving from here to here. Each time it's centered over some X value, I don't know what that X value is, but at each rectangle is centered over some X and two pi X gives me the circumference of that shell. What gives me the height of the shell? Be careful. What's the top of my rectangle touching? What's the bottom of my rectangle touching? A minus X to the three halves. And what's the thickness of the shell? The X, the only thing remaining to be decided are my bounds of integration. That, that rectangle is shifting from where to where. Zero to four. What is it, McKenzie? You put your zero to four on. Oh, the my me! Dang it! I thought I'd make. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I thought I was gonna have a perfect day, McKenzie. Sorry. <laughs> that, that's a good symbol. My volume from zero to four. That makes sense. All right. Um, I punched that and got a cool 384 over 7 pi. Oh, what face? So, yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, very cool. All right, how are we doing? Got about 15 minutes, and I have three more circles, so I think we're in good shape. Let's try 16. Hmm, we have the graph of that one. Sixteen, I think. Now we have shifted to rotating areas around a around the x-axis. And if we're going around the x-axis and we're using the shell method, then our rectangles have to be what? Horizontal have to be parallel to the x-axis and that's horizontal. And what's the what's the center of that rectangle? Why? And the volume um, y equals one minus x. The volume, make sure you're giving me y values for the bounds of integration, 2 pi times the integral from where to where. Lower to upper, negative 2 to 0. And you told me each um, rectangle is centered around a y value. Actually, let me think of how to explain this. Um, if I just say Y, all the Y's below the X axis are negative, but that Y is supposed to be a distance. I can't have a negative distance. So what can I put in place of the distance from the center of the rectangle to the x-axis. I just put y, it's going to be a negative number, and distance isn't negative. I, that would actually work. Um, I think that might make it harder to integrate, but it would absolutely work. Since I know that these y's are negative, then I can just say, negative y would give me a positive distance. If, if a rectangle is centered around negative one and a half, then this would be positive one and a half units from the x-axis. Honestly, I missed that the first time I did this problem, but now I see it. All right, so that's the distance from the x-axis.
and then the height of the rectangle is given to me by, be careful, we're going um, horizontal rectangles. I need you to tell me the right boundary and then the left boundary. What's the right boundary? Mm -hmm. The right edge of that rectangle is touching x equals 3. So 3 and the left boundary is touching that function 1 minus. Actually, yeah, if, if y equals 1 minus x, then x equals 1 minus y, but it's 1 minus y that I need to have in my integral because all this is in terms of y. And the, and the thickness of my shell is what? dy. Two to zero of, oh, that's ugly. Three minus one is two times negative y is negative two y minus y squared. Let me double check that. 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 is negative y, negative 2y plus y times negative y is negative y squared, dy. Yep. Okay. That's what I got. And that is 8 pi over 3. Any questions? All right, two more. Eighteen has the graph for me. And notice that rotating that whole sideways parabola around and around the x-axis, the radius of the widest point of that parabola, the radius isn't 8, it's just 4. If we're rotating this around the x-axis, we'd get the same thing if we just rotated this piece around the x-axis. So, I'm going to play like that part's not even drawn when I'm getting my radius. My radius is this, not this. <clears throat> the fact that we're going around the x-axis and using the shell method means we need horizontal rectangles. And horizontal rectangles have width what? What? Horizontal rectangles have width dy, so I need everything in terms of y. I'm given this function in terms, well, actually in terms of both x and y, but I can solve it for x. I just need to make sure to set up my definite integral with bounds that are y values instead of x values. And my volume would be 2 pi times the integral of this rectangle is going to be sliding up. It's going to be sliding up from 0 up to 4, getting shorter as it goes up. So what is um, the center of that rectangle? some y value. I don't know what y value it's changing because that's shifting up. But 2 pi y gives me the circumference of the shell. What gives me the height of the shell? Mm -hmm. The right boundary is this 16 minus y squared. What's the left boundary? Zero, so 16 minus y squared minus zero. That's the circumference. That's the height. The width or thickness is dy. 
in the balance of integration or what? That rectangle is sliding up from y equals 0 to y equals 4. That definite integral is 64, and when I multiply it by 2 pi, that volume is 128 pi. All right, last one. This one's not wrong for me. y equals square root of x plus 2 y equals x, y equals 0, spun around the x-axis. I know that y equals square root of x plus 2 is a sideways parabola. That's been shifted two to the left. Negative two zero, positive two two. Here's the sideways parabola. I know what the line y equals x looks like. And this is supposed to be bounded by the x-axis. So let me think for a second. y equals x square root of x plus 2 bounded by the x-axis. Oh, okay. I was trying to decide whether to shade that whole fin. Yeah, it's not bounded by the y-axis, it's just bounded by the x-axis. So it kind of looks like a shark fin. I'm spinning around the x-axis. <clears throat> And if the directions say use the shell method, then what kind of rectangles do I need? I'm going around the x-axis. Parallel to the x-axis would be horizontal rectangles. So that's what a rectangle looks like. That's a rectangle of width what? EY. You go ahead and set up the integral. My width is EY and I need everything in terms of Y. When we're using the shell method, our volume formula starts with the circumference of the shell. 
which in this case would be, what's the circumference of this shell? Two pi times the radius, which is y. So two pi, I can bring out in front of the integral symbol, two pi y is the circumference of a shell. Be very careful in giving me the height of the shell. What do you have? That's the bounds of integration, r is equal to two. But what would give me the height of that shell? Yep, what the right edge of that rectangle is touching, that's y, minus what the left edge of that rectangle is touching in terms of y. Wouldn't that be y squared minus two? Yes, yes, thank you. Um, so the right edge is touching y, the left edge is touching y squared minus two, so y minus y squared minus two. And the thickness of each shell is dy. Cleaning that up as much as possible before I grab my calculator. That's negative y squared times y is negative y cubed. That's y times y is y squared. And that's positive two times y is two y. Just cause I don't wanna have all those um, parentheses. I don't wanna have to enter all those parentheses on the calculator. I didn't write down that answer. Does anybody have just the value of the definite integral before you multiply it by 2 pi? I got eight thirds. Eight thirds? Anybody second that? All right. The only thing that we have left is what if we're not just rotating around um, the x axis or the y axis, and what if our radius isn't just x or y because the region's not touching the origin? Once we nail out or iron out those two wrinkles, we'll be ready to hit. Okay, so how am I going to know when to use the disk method and when to use the shell method? And um, we'll talk about that tomorrow. And then Tuesday, so tomorrow is Tuesday, Wednesday, I'll bring in that sheet that has 40 problems on it. Hey, I want the um, 40 problems that just say find the volume and you get to use whatever method. I want this, well, no, I won't take it without Sam here. Um, Bring 7.2 homework back with you tomorrow, and I'll take that up when the same is here tomorrow. <laughs> is the yes, it's at the bottom of the handout, 1 through 21 odd.